Not sure if you're aware of this, right? So this party in London called Adonis, probably one of the best ones here in London. Um, they're mostly, it's, 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 a, it's a gay party. They do some really cool parties here. Um, mostly in the cores and a few other places um i've been to one it's actually it's been actually quite fun they book a bunch of great djs usually don't release the lineup you have to kind of go first to find out or maybe no they do release it on the day but not not beforehand so there's a really cool little thing that they do and shit they have a really cool instagram well they decided recently i didn't know this was an issue but they decided to make a pretty forthright stance um against the war in gaza and basically then i think they made a post declaring that they were like a Zionist free space, like a bit of a rant, basically, on their Instagram page, right? And I didn't really think much of it, right? This is their Instagram page to kind of get an idea on what Adonis is about, right? This is obviously the, the, the night that they do. They post loads of fun images about what goes down at their parties, as you can see here. Some of the stuff is a little bit adult-themed, but it gives you an idea on what the vibe is. And I honestly swear, in terms of raves and clubs and scenes and parties, that these is one of the best places to go and, and chill out i swear to god i fucking love it um it's usually a great vibe even though it can be a, a lot it's good i fucking love it i'm not gonna lie they do a really good job what they do but they put out that statement about being anti-zionist and shit and i didn't really think much of it right i didn't really think much of it i think it was maybe in reaction to something really heinous happening in the news you know israel was kind of I think most people can agree the Israeli government is doing a little bit too much at the moment. They need to fucking chill, chill the fuck out. Um, and I think they probably just reacted to that some of that news. Seeing, you know, scores of people in Gaza suffering as they are. Palestinians kind of, you know, suffering at the hands of the Israeli government and shit. And they probably wanted just to throw out a statement there and kind of lend support and offer out, say, love and support to people who are suffering in Palestine. Well, unfortunately, it seems like they have now regretted that decision. So they're now walking back that, uh, that you know, that initial post because there was a threat that they were going to be sued or something. This is crazy, bro. Crazy. It's courtesy of Mixmag. It says, Adonis issues a statement following a reported legal warning over their retracted no Zionist post. So they made a post saying no Zionist, kind of in jest, you'd imagine. It's not actually saying if you're a Zionist, you can't come in. Because how the hell would they know who's the Zionist and who isn't? It was just more so them saying, hey, we're standing with the Palestinian people. Either way, their fans who maybe are Israeli, maybe took that to be an offense uh, or maybe took that to be a form of discrimination and they went fucking crazy to the point where somebody, I'm assuming, threatened them with legal proceedings, which is fucking crazy. So this is, this is a, it just shows you how insane the world has got at the moment where this is happening. It's just crazy. Let's read the article. It says London Queer Party Adonis and its founder Shay Malt have issued a statement following a reported legal action issued against the club over an alleged anti-Zionism policy. Adonis said in a statement on Saturday, September 14th, that it had retracted a no Zionist post that was briefly online, calling it flippant, ill-considered and retort to an ongoing abuse, attacks and death threats we continue to experience on social media. The statement followed the Jewish news report that the license holders of London nightclub The Cause, where Adonis was hosted, had faced legal actions following the public comment. Wow. Yo. Israeli people don't play, innit? Israeli government don't play. The Israeli Defense League don't play. If you go, if you criticize them in any way, even rightfully, even if you've got reason to criticize them, they will use all the resources that they have to make sure you don't criticize them again because what the fuck so this explains why that so there was an adonis recently a party a birthday party that they cancelled last minute if i'm sure and i think they did it somewhere else or they maybe scaled it back this maybe explains why so they threatened the cause with legal action too so if you don't get these motherfuckers in line we're gonna we're gonna fucking shut you down as well wow yeah, this is dead. They are doing exactly big up um um Elmi. Touchy touchy. This is too much, bro. Cause I remember the no Zionist post. I saw it. They deleted it, obviously. But obviously, you know, it was a little bit like hmm, it's a bit much. But it was just in i I'm pretty sure that no Zionist post was a reaction to what happened in the news that particular week. Like, you know, the horrible images that we're all seeing of Palestinian people being blown up, being, you know, being basically killed left right and center in their thousands you know it's a literal genocide like no one can kind of kind of debate that it's definitely a one-sided war um and they just reacted to it and put, made a post about you know basically standing firm with the palestinian people now was it a little bit hasty 
a little bit kind of ill-conceived, especially considering given that you'd imagine their type of party, they probably have people from all around the world who maybe will take some of those posts offensive, yes. But I don't think it was meant as, oh, we're not going to allow Israeli people to come to our party because something that I've actually only realized recently, especially mostly because of the war in Gaza at the moment and what's happening between, um, what you call it, um, Gaza and, and Israel, Palestine and Israel, I didn't even notice, I didn't know this is a thing, but you get to see it, especially if you're involved in nightlife, how many people that are involved in nightlife that also happen to be Israeli. I don't know why that is. Maybe because Israeli, there is a high population of gay guys there. Maybe that's why, because in nightlife also, there's a high population of gay guys that work behind the scenes. But I was shocked to learn how many people in nightlife, whether they work on streaming platforms, record stores, DJs themselves, booking agents, managers, who are Israeli. It's wild. Like, so many people. Obviously, the first one that stands out is the guy who used to own a big part of E1, which was uncovered. He went to fucking fight in 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 Palestine as part of the Israeli Defense League and most likely killed women and children and shit. Wild story. Eventually, you know, he kind of got exposed and he had to sort of like um, step away from E1, even though I don't think he probably did. Most likely, he probably just like, oh, I am stepping away and then he's probably back in again. But it was really funny like to see, like ob observation. And I've, I've never really found out why the reason is. I don't think it's maybe there is a high population of gay guys in Israel. I don't know. I know they've got a really good nightlife scene out there. Um, they've got really good parties. They've a lot of great DJs come from there. The first person I can think of is Roy Perez. He's he's Israeli. But there's a bunch of people, especially in the nightlife scene. I'm not sure why it is who are Israeli. So many people. So obviously, if you're a Donist and you say no Zionist, even if you're not, even if you're not a Zionist, if you're from Israel, you're gonna take that as an offense. You're gonna you're gonna take that well because that that essentially um, is people discriminating against a place that you're from. Um, wow, honestly, this is a crazy thing. Nightlife is fucking a crazy place. Um, according to Jewish News, the campaign against anti-Semitism wrote a legal letter to the co-directors DL and Drink Limited, the company that holds alliances of the cause, quoting a poll conducted in 2023 which found that 80 percent of British Jews consider themselves as Zionists and only six. Ah, okay. I think they're basically saying most people consider most people who are British and Jewish consider themselves as Zionists. So if you're saying no Zionists at the club, you're discriminating against 80% of the Jewish population in England. <laughs> Adonis must have been so scared, man. They put up a little sassy post standing with the you know their brothers and sisters in Palestine, making it known that they're all about free gaza and shit and their entire party nearly got done um what are you guys saying in the chat uh they basically own the scene exactly adonis better better double check that they don't get a box full of pages exactly done daughter but that's the thing though i want to know hopefully when i clip this up people can tell me in the comments i want to know when did that happen when did it happen because i felt like there was a time where maybe i'm imagining things but i felt like there was a time where the majority of the people who owned quote unquote the dance music scene nightlife scene were like europeans and when i mean europeans i mean like spanish french italian guys but maybe i'm thinking about tech house and minimal i felt like all the guys that were involved with clubs and festivals and booking agencies and whatever they were all from those countries but for some reason in the recent years it felt like it's been a shift and it feels like everybody like even whore you know those guys were israeli like everybody is like everybody's been uncovered to be like an idf person it's like oh shit i didn't know you're from israel i didn't know you're from israel it's interesting i would love to know why that why that is the case um it continues it says mixed mag reached out to the campaign against anti-semitism for comment and they said we will always take a firm action against anyone that seeks to enforce a ban on the vast majority of jews there will be no place for exclusion of jews on or other minorities in the arts Adonis has since claimed that there was no such policy was implemented and that it never has or never would deny anyone entry based on their race, ethnicity, gender or religion or any protected characteristics under covered by the Equality Act of 2020. 2010. <laughs> the funny thing is they kind of do though, which they have to, which is what they do with door picking. Most of the best club nights in London have a door picker, a person who stands there, and even though you've got money to buy a ticket or you've got a ticket, in the Donuts cases, there is no, no, there is a pre-sale ticket, sorry. But you just, you know, they still have a door picker who makes sure the person that's coming in is of the right vibe. Now, it's hard to judge off of just a brief interaction.
but I'm sure whoever does do it, there's a technique, there's a process, there's a rhythm, whatever. There's a way to do it. But there is a form of discrimination through door picking. So it does exist in a way. And it's funny because most door picking policies work against people that look like me. That's a funny thing. Most door picking policies work against people that look like me or guys in general, especially lads. Like if you were to turn up to Adonis and you look like a conventional group of lads, but you just wanted to rave, they might turn you away, you know? They might turn you away. Now, it might be they're turning you away because they feel like you won't be comfortable with what you see. And they don't want your uncomfort to then make other people who are there, who the party is created for, to feel uncomfortable. Which is which is very... Um, which makes a lot of sense. Understandable. Because the party is predominantly made for gay guys. So why would you allow lads in there who are all straight to party when they're going to be freaked out by what they see, they're going to make the gay guys who are in there seeking refuge and seeking a place to go and feel comfortable and be themselves, they're going to get freaked out and it's just creating a weird environment. Like, the first time I went to fucking Adonis, the first time I went to Adonis, I had, you know, not the bestest time because I really wasn't with it. I wasn't really taking anything. I didn't drink that much as well. Um, I just wasn't, wasn't feeling the vibe. But the first time I went to Adonis, the first thing I saw, I went straight to the toilet to try to get myself, like, it's one of those nights where, you know when you try to take multivitamins to try to get yourself in the mood of the rave? I tried and did that, but it didn't work. And I think after about two hours, I left. But the first thing I saw when I went to Adonis, I went into the toilets. No, I went, I went, I went to the, I went to the cause. I went to the main room, which is the main cause room bit, which you all know. And then there's another room where you kind of go through the back. And it's like a little second room where they also had the DJ there. I was in there for a bit. Then I went to the toilet of that room, which is kind of up a few stairs. And as I went, as I walked into the toilet, I saw somebody who I recognized, like a famous DJ, what named the person, coming out of the toilet cubicle with two guys by either of his side, his trousers down by his knees, a condom hanging off the, the, the tip of his penis, and those two guys rubbing his chest. <laughs> That's the first thing I saw when I walked into the Adonis toilets. That's when I thought, you know what? I'm in Adonis. I'm in the right place. <laughs> this is where I should be. No, no. I, I thought to myself, this is where they should be, but I shouldn't be here. <laughs> I felt like I was intruding. I was like, I'm I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the right place at the wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> As I was coming in, they just came out from a little little a little a little cheeky threesome in a fucking cubicle. I was like, fucking hell. Fucking. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it's just like the, the sad thing I think about a lot of the scene is that they say they're inclusive. They say it's all about diversity and all this malarkey. But if my little brothers were to go to some... if I, I think my little brothers would get turned away at fold. And my little brothers are what people would describe as like stereotypical kind of black guys, right? If my little brothers went to fold, they would get turned away. And I don't think that's fair because they're into the same, they're into the same stuff that I'm into. Do you know what I mean? They just don't look like they're... They, they just don't look like they're into it kind of thing. So that's the thing I, I don't like about the whole like picking thing because it kind of doesn't really discriminate it discriminates mostly against people that look like me i feel like and obviously guys in general who maybe don't present a certain way i think if you're like straight presenting you kind of suffer and struggle to get into a lot of club nights in london now again it's moaning because you know there's loads of fucking straight nights to go to it's not like we're fucking you know devoid of options but unfortunately in london like let's just call the spade a spade man the the gays and the queers are running the scene bro they've got the best parties they've got the best vibes they've got the best collectives the coolest nights the coolest late like they're doing they're doing the best shit so we want to go to their raves but sometimes you know they don't want us to come <laughs> because clearly you know we, we might not come there if you get what i mean you know <laughs> which i get too i i get i get the dilemma but yo israeli people don't play man israeli People don't play. Jewish people don't fuck around. Um, the party noted that it retains its inclusive values, pointed back to a statement issued in early August, where it claims to have been a victim of a smear campaign against um, for following a pro-Palestinian post online, which has been met with hate and violent threats in recent months. See, that's not fair. I think if you're if you're a Zionist, if you're proud to be a Zionist, but somebody is then proudly and loudly pro-Palestinian, you have to let them cook. You can't be like, oh, you being pro-Palestinian is invalidating who I am and it's making me feel like I'm being um, attacked and I'm not worth... No, 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 no. Don't be a baby. Don't be a baby. If you want to be pro-Israeli and you want to be a pro-whatever, cool. That's where you're from. Fly your flag. Be proud of what you're doing. You know, you're making... Whatever. Even if you're going to make excuses for your government, do what you want to do. 
But if somebody wants to fly that Palestinian flag, if somebody wants to say free Gaza from the, what you call it, from the whatever to the sea, that slogan they say, if they, whatever they want to do, let them rock as well. Both sides will be able to say what they want to say. I don't like this whole like, oh no, if, you, if you're saying that you're invalidating me as a person, I feel like I'm being discriminated against. Like, come on, come on. Let's grow up a little bit. It continues. Um, a previous statement explained. At Adonis, Jewish people have always been welcome and present. It would go against all what we stand for to exclude anyone based on their ethnicity or race. As queer people, however, we believe that we have a duty to stand in solidarity against oppression in all its forms. It includes from religious fundamentalists of all variations, far-right ultranationalists, racists, xenophobes, and genocide apologists. Which is basically them saying... Israelis. <laughs> this is a great quote. This is a great quote. Big up Adonis. This is a fantastic quote. We're sorry, but we're not sorry. As queer people, we believe we have a duty to stand in solidarity against oppression in all its forms. This includes from religious fundamentalists of all variations, far-right ultranationalists, racists, xenophobes, and genocide apologists. Our ongoing support of Palestinian justice, which we understand may come across as divisive in its tone, is based on our anger, horror, and despair at the current situation unfolding in Gaza and the West Bank. So they're saying, hey, we're saying what we're saying for a reason. We're saying what we're saying because men, women, and children are being killed in the thousands every fucking day. Every fucking day by the Israeli government. So they're basically saying we have a reason. We have a right to be uh, <laughs> anti-Zionists. <laughs> oh, this is so fucking incredible. Stuart Glenn. Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. I spoke to him on Facebook once. Yeah, this, is the, this is one of the owners of the cause. Oh, my God. Stuart Glenn of DL Food and Drink reported response to the Jewish News and said... They hear, after an external review and that the causes against racism and hate and planned Adonis event take place we got we did not go ahead forthcoming Adonis parties in October November and December are currently scheduled with event details indicating the party has parted ways with the cause wow you know what's funny isn't I don't know isn't this guy also Jewish the guy that owns it I swear he might be I swear that might I swear that I swear this guy because i think i spoke to him ages ago on facebook about trying to get a gig there and i swear to god i think he might also be jewish <laughs> oh <laughs> so adonis is no longer um doing raves with uh the cause it seems like holy fucking shit part of me feels like adonis should just focus on putting on fun parties right part of me feels like adonis should just focus on putting on the raves and not get overly political but then part of me also knows Adonis is part, the whole reason for, for Adonis, you know, existing is that they represent, as they said in that quote, right? Like, that's 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 their whole point of existing um, was that we they believe in the duty of solidarity. So that's part of the whole expression. That's part of the whole rave. It's a celebration of that. Solidarity against oppression. They talk about politics and shit all the time. So they can't, you know? But the price you pay is that venues, largely it seems like, are controlled by either Israeli people or Jewish people. And if you're out here saying you're anti-Zionist and they all think of themselves as Zionists and they don't say it as like a bad thing, they're going to take that personally and they're going to tell you, hey, you can't put a party on in my club. Go fuck yourself. And there's not many clubs in London, especially a lot of clubs that will be open and willing to you know, accommodate that type of, um, those type of parties or to be able to run that long or whatever it may be. Because that's a good thing about the cause. It's got an amazing outdoor area. It opens until 6 a.m. There's not many clubs in London that can open that late. So you are really low on options. That's the thing. You make your stance, you stand with the Palestinians, but then you kind of fuck yourself because now you've got nowhere else to go because there's not that many options around and everyone's kind of fighting for the same clubs. But it's like, there's probably like five good clubs in London that everyone wants to put a party at. And most likely you'd imagine they all kind of have bo have been booked up months or years in advance. So I, f I really feel for Adonis. I'm not going to lie. I feel for Adonis because they're standing up for their principles. They're standing up for what they believe in, but it's kind of cost them. It sounds like it's kind of cost them because now they're walking back a statement. They've ended a relationship with the cause. Everything's kind of going tits up or cocks up. Um, next party is on the what the 5th of October but there's no uh, detail on when where it's going to be what's the Instagram saying what's that there, there's the Instagram oh Instagram as well there's no all the comments are closed on their posts as well by the way most of the posts have got no comments open shit 
God damn. Let's check the Instagram stories quickly before I finish this. Instagram stories. Oh, look, see? <laughs> they're still they're, they're still fucking standing tall. Big up a this though. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's probably cost them some money. It's probably cost them a lot of heartache, but they're still fucking standing 10 toes down, being very, very politically active. They hit emergency protest hands off on, on Lebanon, stop the genocide. They're putting a post up on here about the protests happening on Thursday. Um, in solidarity with the Lebanese people, like fuck you, no, bigger fucking Adonis. They're not fucking, they're not going out without a fight. Let's actually refresh that screen. Let's actually see if anything else happened here. And let me see what you're saying in the in the stream chat. What are you guys saying in the stream chat? Um, they they basically on the scene. Tel Aviv was one of the. Oh, is that what? Okay, cool. That explains it. Uh, big up Don Dotter. Tel Aviv is was one of the party capitals. Yeah, I noticed that because there's a there's a couple clubs there. There's a actually I think there's a club that um. Roy Perez's boyfriend. I forgot. His, what's his name again? I think his name is Yonti or something. Yonti or someone like that. He plays in this club in Israel. That I remember seeing Tel Aviv. That's fucking gorgeous. And the videos I saw, like, I just saw a lot of like you know very um handsome looking Israeli guys <laughs> dancing. They're having a good time. So, and that seemed like a normal small club. So it seemed like they've got a really big scene out there popping. I didn't. I, I wasn't aware of that to be honest. That's that's a really big um oversight for me. I wasn't aware there was a big scene over there. They've always been heavily invested in the entertainment, says AZ. No, entertainment, I understand, Chris Mack. I get it. But I just, I thought, naively, that most of the techno-adjacent scene was owned by, like, Italian, Spanish, and French guys. Because most of the big DJs are from those countries anyway. But effectively, what I've seen now, the actual real people who are running the scene are people from specifically Israel. It's, like, it's funny. It's really interesting. Like, specifically one country is the one that's, you know, who's holding up the entire scene, infrastructure-wise. It's fucking wild. Seems like every single group that does everything they can to make fall out of me, exactly. I'll go spilling tea. From the river to the sea is a pretty brutal, though. Uh, da, 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 da. Chris Mack from river to the sea is a, is a reference to the OG biblical kingdom of Israel, Judah, if I remember correctly. So when they chant it, it'll be free. They mean that they want all the Jewish people out. Not just a two-state solution. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I'm, I'm aware of that. Unlikely that will happen, though, unfortunately for them. Um, I dislike bullies as well as MC. Exactly. No chance on partying in some IDF dancing Israelites. Yeah. So, yeah, all the comments are turned off as well. Fuck, man. I feel, I feel sorry for Adonis, man. They're standing up for what they believe in, but it seems like they've been kind of like put... They've, they've been silenced, effectively. They've effectively been silenced. They've effectively been fucking silent. Yeah, all the comments are, are closed. This is a, the last post of comments open is this one. Let's see, is there anything happening here? Any updated comments? This is the last post with comments on it. Wow. This is pretty fucking brutal. Adonis might be on the on the ropes. On the fucking ropes. Nothing there. But yeah, Adonis is gone. And um, I don't know. I think I'm... Overall, I think my stance has always been we should try and keep politics out of dance music as much as possible. But if it's a part of what you do and who you are, especially your rave and what you represent, then obviously fly the flag and go down with the fucking ship. But it's just a shame that it can impact you in this severe way, you know? Like legitimately, it's impacted them where the party might not be, might not exist in the way that it did in the past just because of their stance against, you know, a clear, a clear a clear <laughs> horrible thing that we're all seeing unfold over there in palestine it's like you know like calling out something that's clearly evil and bad and it's hurting a bunch of people and now you are having to pay the price for it or suffering monetarily you know career-wise it's just it's, it's really not fair it really isn't fair so solidarity with adonis also understand for israeli people seeing a post that says no zionists on it can seem like somebody's attacking people that like yourself and where you come from and shit and you see it like as a personal attack or whatever which it it, it is it it kind of is but it isn't but i feel like it just needs to be a little bit more grow everyone needs to be grown up on either side if you want to be pro-palestinian and say your chants and talk about you know being a fan of hezbollah and all this malarkey right or hamas sorry and do all that kind of racy dicey dicey shit you also have to be aware that people on the other side are going to be extra extra hardcore in supporting their side as well so i wish everyone could do it on both sides in equal measures but it doesn't work out that way unfortunately especially if one side controls or has the keys to all the fucking venues they get to basically dictate how they get spoken about online i guess in it but 
Anyway, solidarity with Adonis. Solidarity with Adonis. We stand strong with you. Hopefully they figure it out. Hopefully Adonis figure it out.